Hey, hey friends, it's border time for the Better Together Crochet Throw. Um, in the previous video where I showed you how to do this stitch and make up the blanket, I mentioned the fact that um, in the pattern that I made, I did a double border, um, also called an envelope border for this blanket. And so, uh, and I told you that I would show you how to do that in another video. So here it is. Um, but in that video, I mentioned the fact that you would need to tie all of your ends into knots, just double knots, nothing fancy, and then trim those down to no more than an inch and a half. I actually did these a little shorter than I normally would just because this is a little bitty swatch, um, but you might want to make it, you know, an inch and a half. You don't want it too long because that will create bulk inside the border and you don't want that. So if those knots are really secure, um, you know, you could do it about an inch. So anyway, so you want to make sure to start off with that your work is facing, the, the right side of your work is facing you. You can tell that it's the right side if your tail is on the left. And here's my little tail, it's been snipped off, but it's the tail. Um, and that is if you're right-handed. If you're a lefty, if you're a southpaw, I have two southpaws in my family. Two of my girls are left-handed, and so is my grandmother. But anyway, if you are crocheting left-handed, then your tail will be on the right. Just FYI, in case you didn't know that already. So with the right side facing you, um, you are going to start a slip stitch. And I like to start from the corner usually about an inch or two away from the corner. It just makes it, uh, if it's closer to the corner, it's harder, it's not harder, it's easier to keep track of your stitches um, as you go, in my opinion. So that's why I like to start there. This thing is not staying in focus very well, guys. I'm sorry about that. There, hopefully that will help. Okay, so anyway, I'm gonna insert my hook right here and using color C, which in this case is a dark green, and the pattern, it's the dark gray. And of course, you can use whatever color you want. Um, this is just the color I'm choosing to use. Um, you're gonna pull up a loop. And then we're gonna start slip stitching all the way around. Notice I didn't chain up. When I tried that initially, it left a little V that I didn't like on the border, so I'm not even chaining up to start. So we're just gonna start slip stitching all the way around. And a slip stitch is super easy. That's the very smallest crochet stitch there is. You're just gonna insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then pull that loop through the loop that's already on the hook. And there's your slip stitch. And then I'm gonna go to the next stitch, do the same thing. And we're just gonna do this all the way around the blanket. Now when you get to a corner, normally you round that corner by doing some chains or extra stitches or whatever. But in this case, you're just gonna turn it and go right to the side. We're not rounding that corner. Now, when we are actually um, building height with the border, we will, but right now we are not. So we're gonna do one slip stitch per row going down the side. So you've just got it vertical that you've got a, a vertical and a horizontal or depending on which which way you're looking at it you're just it's going to be a little squared off corner okay so then i'm going to go to my next one do a slip stitch and just do that all the way down the side one slip stitch per row Okay, now I'm to a corner again. So remember, I'm not rounding it. I'm just gonna go straight into 
uh, the stitch on this end. Those little ends can get in your way, but don't let them don't let them mess you up. Then we're just going to go all the way down the end with slip stitches. And try not to slip stitch too tightly. Otherwise, you're probably gonna be kicking yourself on this next round, trying to uh, work your hook into the backs of those slip stitches. So it doesn't need to be crazy loose, but definitely don't make them too tight. I'm in fact a little worried that I've made mine <laughs> a little bit tight, but we'll see. All right, no need to round the corner. We're just gonna go straight up the side directly into that stitch there. Remember we're doing one slip, slip stitch per row, per color. Okay, now we're back to the beginning. So I'm just gonna slip stitch into that same stitch where I pulled through. And then we've got our solid line. And I'm gonna cut my yarn. Pull through. And call it good. All right. So that is our first, our, our base round for our border. And I will in fact probably pull this end through here, just so it's a nice clean front. And then I can tie these together. All right, let's get started on the next round. So I went ahead and tied these two ends into a knot. So they are nice and secure and aren't gonna be moving around or working themselves out as we work on the rest of this border. So the first thing you'll need to do is to go down a hook size. The reason for this is twofold. First of all, a smaller hook more easily fits underneath these slip stitches, the backs of these slip stitches for this first round. And secondly, it just makes for a neater border. I found that if I use the same hook size as I did for the body of my blanket, that my border tends to be wavy. So if you go down a hook size, that helps eliminate that. And incidentally, I found the same to be true anytime I've made blankets using moss stitch or mesh, mesh stitch. So you can just take note of that. All right, so to start, we're gonna be on the back side of our work, and I like to go a few stitches out from the corner on the top side. So um, you can go into any stitch that you want. It's just personal preference. So I'm gonna go into the back of that slip stitch and grab my yarn, lay it over the top of my hook, and pull up a loop. And then I'm gonna um, chain up two. Now we're just gonna double crochet underneath the backs of these slip stitches for the whole rest of this round. So nothing complicated. The only thing that's really complicated is if you've made these stitches too tight and really have to work to get underneath them. So just take care as you do that round of slip stitches to not make them overly tight or you'll be kicking yourself, and I may be kicking myself. Okay, so here's that little knot, and I'm just gonna work around it, pretend like it's not even there. That will get tucked in uh, as we finish off that border later. Okay. 
Okay, so now I'm to the corner and you can tell that this is the corner because you've got this horizontal stitch from the top and you've got this vertical stitch along the side. So we're gonna double crochet into the last stitch, the last stitch on the top, then chain two, and then you're gonna go directly into that side stitch, that first side stitch. And that will create the corner for us. Just the two chains in between the last stitch on the top and the first stitch on the bottom or on the side. And then we just keep double crocheting down the side. And the backs of those slip stitches. Okay, now to, I'm to another corner. You can see that because these look perpendicular. So I'm gonna double crochet into this last stitch on the side. And this one is a little tight. Then I'm gonna chain two to create a corner. And then double crochet into the back of that slip stitch, that first slip stitch on the bottom. And then I'm gonna go all the way down the side. So I will continue on slip or double crocheting into these slip stitches with two chains in the corner. And then um, I will meet you back when I get back to the beginning. All right, I have one more stitch to go before this round is finished. And then to close it up and complete this round, I'm just gonna uh, slip stitch into the top of this chain two that I made from the beginning of the round. So really, really easy. And then round one is complete. This will get tucked in later, so don't worry about that. This is what you should have so far though. All right, then to start round two, Chain up two. Don't turn your work. We're gonna continue working on the same side. And then you're just gonna double crochet into the tops of these double crochets all the way around. Super easy. And this is way less complicated and time consuming than the previous round was. Now when you get to a corner, you're gonna work two double crochets into that corner space, followed by two chains, and then two more double crochets all in the same corner space. And then you're just gonna continue with double crochets all down the side. Now I will say be really careful to not miss this double crochet. You can see the top of that stitch uh, gets really easily hidden by all of these stitches being bunched together in that corner space. So just kind of move those to the side and um, make sure you're not forgetting that stitch. And then just work all the way down the side Keep bumping my camera, guys. Sorry. Okay. 
Now we're to another corner, so we're going to work two double crochets, chain two, and two more double crochets, all in the same corner space. Then just double crochet down the end of the blanket like normal. Remember to not forget this stitch. Pull those to the side so you can see the top of that stitch, where to work in, because it's really easy for that to get hidden and then just forget about it. And then continue around as you did before. Um, I will do that here and then I'll meet you back when I get back to the beginning. All right, I have one stitch left for this round. So let's get that done. And then to complete it and close it off, I'm just gonna slip stitch into the top of this chain two that I made at the beginning of the round. And this round is complete. So this is what you should have. Again, this will get tucked in later. Don't worry about that. Now, if you want to do another round, which I, that's what I did for my blanket, you can do as many rounds as you want, uh, but it's literally done the same as round two. So I will not bore you with another round. When you are finished with however many rounds you wanna do and you are um, finished slip stitching into the top of that chain two, just pull that all the way through and you are finished. So this is what the back side of your border will look like. So let's move on to the front. Now the front side of this border has worked exactly the same as the back side. The only difference being we are gonna work our stitches in the back loop only of the fronts of these slip stitches. And all that means, if you're not familiar with that, is that you are gonna put your hook right in the middle of this V. This is the front loop, this is the back loop. And so you're gonna put your hook right in the middle of that V and go underneath that back loop. And just place your yarn over your hook and pull up a loop through that back loop only and chain up two. This will count as our first stitch of the round. And then just double crochet all the way around in the same way that we did on the other side of the border. Again, the only difference being that you're, you're going in the back loop only. Now you don't have to do this if you don't want to you could go underneath both loops. But this gives a really pretty crisp edge to the border on the front side of your blanket. And you can already see that forming right there. See how nice that looks? It just gives a really crisp, clean edge. So anyway, that is your preference, your choice. Um, if you wanna go underneath both loops, by all means do that. But if you wanna do back loop only, then that is your prerogative. All right, so we're to a corner. We're gonna follow the same protocol that we did um, on the back side of the blanket. So I'm gonna make a double crochet and then chain two. And then I'm gonna go directly to this side stitch, the first side stitch, and make a double crochet into that stitch. And then you've got your corner. Then I'm gonna double crochet through the back loop only all down the side. Those ends might get in your way a little bit, but it's okay. This is literally the only round that that is really a bother. And I would much rather have them kind of there in the way than have to weave them in. So <laughs> pick your poison. Okay. 
Okay, we're to the corner. This is the last stitch on the side, so I'm gonna double crochet into that. Then chain two, then double crochet into that first stitch on the bottom, and we have our corner made. All right, I'm gonna continue all the way around this blanket. I won't make you watch me do that. I will meet you back when I am back to the beginning. So I've reached my last stitch and I'm gonna get that worked. And then finish off the round just like I did on the back side where you slip stitch into the top of this chain two to close that up and Round one is finished on the front. See how nice that edge looks, how pretty and crisp. So pretty. Round two starts exactly the same way, and in fact is done exactly the same way as you did on the back side of the blanket. So chain up two, that will count as your first stitch. Then just double crochet in every double crochet around the blanket. And when you get to your corner spaces, remember to work two double crochets. Followed by two chains. And two more double crochets all in the chain, the same corner space. That'll give you a nice, clean, crisp corner. Then double crochet all down the side. Remember to pull this a little bit, unbunch it so you can see that first stitch so that you don't accidentally miss that. Those get very easily hidden. Go all the way down the side. Oops, split my yarn. Try not to do that. Then back to a corner, so two double crochets, two chains, and two more double crochets, all in the same corner space. Pull that to the side so you don't accidentally skip this stitch. And then continue on all the way down the end and then make another corner and go all the way up the side. And I will continue on with that without making you suffer through and I'll meet you back when I'm back to the beginning. All right, here's the last stitch of this round. And then I'm gonna complete it in the same way that I've done all the other rounds by slip stitching to the top of that chain two. I've already cut my yarn, so I'm gonna pull through with that. And round two is complete. So it should look like this. At this point, if you haven't already done it, weave in this end from the back and this end from the front so those are nice and secure and won't come apart. And then we start the very last step, which is joining these together by slip stitching. Now I'm not gonna weave these in, I'm just gonna tuck them in for time's sake. We'll pretend like that's done. All right, so to slip, these sti to slip stitch these two sides together, it's really easy. I like to start three or four stitches from the corner because that just makes it a little easier to keep track of the stitches and make sure they're matching up. 
And I think um, I'm actually gonna turn this upside down and start on the bottom just so there aren't quite so many joins all in the same place. Um, honestly, they aren't super noticeable when you have a really big blanket, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do that for funsies. All right, so I'm gonna count one, two, three, and insert my hook into the front, and then do the same thing on the back. One, two, three, insert your hook through there. Let me grab my yarn. Just lay it over the top of your hook and pull through both of those sides. And then I'm not gonna chain up or anything, I'm just gonna start slip stitching, matching up the stitches from the front to the back all the way around the blanket. So really easy. This is the last stitch before the corner. And here's your corner. And then just move on down the side. And then just make sure those ends are tucked in as you go. Especially if they're on the longer side, these are pretty short, so not as big an issue. So that's really all there is to it. I'm gonna go ahead and work my way around this entire thing, and I'll meet you back when I'm back to the beginning. But this is what you should have so far. Okay, I'll meet you back. So this is the last stitch before my last corner. Everything is still matching up nicely. My last corner. I should just have two more to go. And then just slip stitch to your beginning. Pull through. Weave in that end. Weave in the end where you started. And you're all finished. All finished. How cool is that? And isn't that a pretty border? Now, before I leave you, I want to point out one potential issue that you could have as you make this border. And that is, what if when you get to a corner, your stitches aren't lining up? As in, like, you might have three stitches on one side and two stitches on the other. You do not have to completely rip that out and start all over. Um, this is really easy to fudge. So I made this um, so that I've got three on this, or no, actually two on this side left, and I have three on the back side left. So all I'm going to do is work in this next stitch. Remember, I have two on this side, so I'm going to go in this third one. And, and slip stitch. And then I'm just going to work in that same stitch again in the front and then grab that next stitch in the back. And in doing that, you can get them to, um, to even out again. So now I just have one stitch on the front and one stitch on the back and we're good to go. And no one will ever be the wiser that that happened and you just continue on as normal. So, corner stitch. Whoops. And then two more where I started. And then slip stitch to join. 
and pull through and weave in your end and weave in your end. And as you can see, that looks absolutely no different than if I had done it, uh, if I hadn't made any mistakes at all. Now I would say if you have more than one um, stitch that you're off, you might wanna pull it back several. I wouldn't do all of those together because then you really might have kind of a bunched up look if you do that. So just pull those stitches back a little ways and do your fudging in more than one spot as you work your way back up to the corner. But that's really all you have to do. And um, I don't know, I just, I love this border, especially when you're, when you are doing blankets where you have a lot of ends to weave in. This just eliminates that. And this is so pretty and crisp and nice and neat and substantial. It's a nice heavy border. Um, I just love it. So I hope that this helps as you potentially make this blanket the um, Better Together throw and work this border to go along with it if you choose to do that. So I will sign off for now and I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye-bye.